Hello and welcome to Charger Games. My name is Raja and this is another episode of C Sharp tutorial for game development with Unity. So in the last couple of videos we have learned the basic structure of a C Sharp script inside Unity and we have also learned about this start update and awake functions. So in this video we're gonna focusing on functions. So we're gonna create our own custom functions in this video and we're gonna learn why do we need functions. Uh, why how to create functions and we then we'll also learn about the return types of functions and the parameters of functions so we're gonna learn everything about functions so let's get started so first of all why the heck do we need a function so we know that whenever we wanna do we wanna do something we wanna do a task we just write a statement for that in uh, C sharp so Suppose I want my player to shoot whenever I press the uh, space button. Okay, so what I do is I have some codes which work whenever I want to shoot. As an example, I have to do something so that the bullet gets instantiated, then the bullet goes uh, from the player's gun towards the enemy, and then it gets blasted, and a lot of things should be done. So I want to do a lot of things whenever I want the player to be shoot whenever I want the player to shoot. So what I can do is I can just pack all these codes that I want whenever to call uh, that I want to be called whenever the player shoots inside a function called shoot. And what will happen is whenever I want the player to shoot, I just call the function and automatically everything just gets called. So instead of writing all the code for shooting again and again and again, I just put the code inside a function called shoot and whenever I need to, whenever the player needs to shoot, I just call that function and all those code gets called. So this is the magic of functions. Inside a function we can write a lot of code and then we can call that function from wherever, from wherever we want and all those codes get called automatically. So let's go and take some examples and see what I'm talking about. So, in order to create a function, first of all, you have to write name of a function. Suppose I want to uh, give name the function shoot, show it shoot, and then you have to press, uh, then you have to place a pair of parentheses, and then I press a pair of curly braces. Okay. So this is how we write a function. Uh, we have a pair of parentheses, and then we have a pair of curly braces, and every function has capability to return a something okay so whenever I'm calling a function I also have the capability to get something in return from the function okay so that is what called the return type of function so the return type determines what kind of data we wanna get in return from the function as an example if we wanna get an integer in return from the function then we write int in front of the function if we want to get a float value in return from the function, then we write a float. And if we if we don't want to get anything in return from the function, we just write a void. So void means we don't want the function to return us anything. So in this case, we don't want a function to return us anything. We just want it to uh, do some step-by-step -step tasks. So that is why we'll put void before shoot. So now, inside this pair of curly braces is the function body so whatever we want to do we just need to call it we just need to put it here inside this so inside this I'm gonna put debug dot log shooting so I'm just give it taking it as an example so that is why I'm just putting this kind of code but inside this function we can give you can put whatever you want okay so you can put all the code that needs to be called whenever the player needs to be shoot so I put this code inside this and whenever I need to call these things inside this shoot function I just need to call this shoot function and all these codes will run automatically so let's see how we can call this shoot function so inside start let's go and write shoot like this now let's see what happens. Now let's comment it out too. So inside this, I'm gonna write shoot, and now I'm gonna keep the window console here, and then I'm gonna play it. As you can see, since we have put inside put the shoot inside start function, 
and the start function gets called at the beginning so what will what is happening here is the start function is calling this shoot function and that is why all the code inside this shoot is getting called so the function uh, so in order to execute anything that is inside the body of the function we need to call the function and this is how we call the function so whatever in our code we want to shoot we just call the shoot function and everything that needs to be done for shooting will happen automatically okay so this is the basics of um, calling a function and we have also learned about the return types now one more thing you have to learn about function is something called a parameter now I have said you guys that you have the ability to return something from the function okay R the same way we also have the ability to take some take some inputs or take some parameters or take some data inside the function so what function does is it takes some inputs processes the data or does some tasks and at the end it returns us something okay so it takes something does some tasks and then returns us a data but the passing the parameter or giving it some inputs and getting something in return is in our hands so we can either uh, take some input or we don't so it's uh, completely on us so let's take a look at how we can uh, take some parameters so in order to pass some data inside your function you have to mention what kind of data you want to pass as an example suppose I want to pass an integer so inside this pair of parentheses I want to write int data and you can name it whatever you want so now we have the ability to pass something inside these parentheses whenever we are calling this shoot function and that should be an integer since we are we have declared the data as an integer so now what we can do is inside this we can debug dot log data so what will happen is we will pass some data inside this shoot function and then we will print that data from here okay so inside this shoot function wherever we calling it from start let's go and pass 5 so what will happen is this 5 is getting passed here and it is coming here okay actually we're calling the function here but it is actually coming here and then it is first of all printing shooting and then it is printing the data that is 5 that we have just given it here so let's go and check it out what I'm telling about as you can see let's clear it again uh, now I'm playing and as you can see it says 5 so that means whatever data I have passed it here it is just printing that let's test it out with some other values uh, if I want to print 10 so I'm just pass 10 and now if I play it as you can see it prints 10 so this is how we actually this is how we actually pass some data by using some parameters inside a function and as I've said that we also have the ability to get something in return from a function and I haven't shown that so let's go and take a look at that so if I give if I give write an int here so now we have the ability to return something from this function so let's go and return something now in order to return something you can you have to write return and then whatever you wanna write suppose I wanna write data plus 5 or let's write data asterisk 2 I think that's better so now what I'm doing is I am taking a data I'm processing it and then I'm returning the double of that so if I pass 5 from here I'm returning 10 if I'm passing 10 from here I'm returning 20 so I'm I'm not taking a data and then I'm returning the double of that so this is what the basic functionality of a function so now let's take a look at how we can get this value that we are returning from here so in order to get this value inside it inside the start we have to uh, get the data inside something so since we are calling this function like this so it is returning us something and we have to store that value inside a variable so let's go and create a variable called a 
and now what is happening is first of all the function is getting called like here and then it is returning the double of the data and that data is getting stored inside A okay and now if we if we go and debug log here A go and debug log the value of A so what will happen is since we are passing 10 here 10 is getting here and it is getting doubled and then it is returning the double of that and storing inside A and then we are printing the value of A so since we are passing 10 here we will get 20 if we pass 5 here we will get 10 so let's go and take a look at this so if I run it right now as you can see it prints 20 first time it prints 10 and then it prints 20 so first time it is printing 10 since I am passing the value 10 here so it is getting stored inside data so now we are passing 10 so data is 10 and here we are printing the data so 10 is getting printed and next we are multiplying 10 by 2 so multiplying 10 by 2 means 20 and then we are returning that value 20 okay and then we are storing the value that is getting that is 20 so from here we are getting 20 and then we are storing this value inside this variable named a and finally we are printing the value of that variable so that means finally we are printing the value 20 and that is why here 20 is getting printed and first time 10 is getting printed so that was the very basics of functions and I think this was almost everything about functions so we learned what is function why do we need that we learned uh, the basic structure of a function we learned about the return type of function we also learned how to pass parameters and how to get returns and how to store that value inside something so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something of course so thank you very very much for watching and if you have any questions if you got any problems just make sure to let me know inside the comments below and uh, make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet because uh, it will help you to get all my videos whenever I upload them and if you like this video like this video and if you hated this video just let me know in the comments so thanks a lot for watching and have a great day see you in the next video thanks